Hi guys, Sajjad Hussain again. Today I am going to discuss the design of structure and foundation for vibrating machines. And my whole lecture is based on this book by Suresh Arya and Michael O'Neill and George Pincus. So first what I will do, I will discuss the basic theory regarding the vibration foundation vibration or you can say machine vibration or in general vibration or dynamics and then I will switch to design of machine foundation. So let us start with the presentation. My lecture is the topic of my lecture is machine foundation design of course by me and in this lecture I am going to cover first the introduction then various definitions, then the required input, theory of vibration, design criteria, and then a problem which is solved in the book, I will solve here. First of all, let's try to understand what is the design of vibrating machine foundation. What are the causes of machine foundation vibration? This is because of the imbalance, misalignment, worn, improper, driven, looseness and resonance. Basically, the analysis and design of foundations are subjected to vibratory loads which involve interaction of structural engineering, geotechnical engineering and the theory of vibration. That's why I am going to first here discuss the theory of vibration. The overall size of machine foundation are determined on the plant layout requirements from machine and geotechnical data and dynamic characteristic or response of the foundation. Basically, we deal with two kind of machine foundations. Number one is a block foundation. A block foundation means it consists of thick slab of concrete directly supporting, on the, supporting the machine and fixed auxiliary equipment. Second is tabletop foundation which consists of framed structure with top slab columns and bottom slab. The skid mounted machinery directly rests on the top slab. For the beginners who are not very much familiar with the structural dynamics, let me introduce some of the concepts here. Number one, the amplitude. Amplitude means it is the maximum displacement of a body or some part of the system from a reference point at any given time. Vibration means a time varying magnitude of peak displacement from a reference point. Damping means a factor used in dynamic system to account for the dissipation of energy. When we say modal analysis, modal analysis means the dynamic analysis of multi-degree freedom system where the response in the normal modes are determined separately and then superimposed to get the total response. Eigenvalues, these are the character values or natural frequencies. Reciprocating machines, reciprocating machines, oh, sorry, reciprocating machines that produce unbalanced force, that is compressor and reciprocating engines with operating frequency less than 600 RPM. Rotary machines, these are high speed machines like turbo generator or rotary compressor may have a speed more than 3000 rpm and reaching up to 10000 rpm now what are the required input to design a machine foundation first of all we need the machine data when we say machine data what does it mean this means the general arrangement drawing showing the location of machine uh, its driver gearbox and auxiliary system Outline dimensions of the machine base and anchor bolt layout. Foundation bolt specification including material, configuration and size of anchor bolt. Weight and location of center of gravity of the combined machine assembly and for each component especially rotating mass. Magnitude and location of specific static loads. For reciprocating machines both primary and secondary unbalanced forces and couple uh, and couple 
and representative center of gravity locations. For centrifugal machine, the dynamic unbalanced forces are required for each rotor to be applied at respective center of gravity location. Then machine operating speed and operating speed range. Grouting requirements, a specific limit of dynamic amplitude that could damage the machine at operating speed or could shut down the machine from operation. Any specific recommendation from machine vendor regarding the design and construction of machine foundation like settlement, etc. That means what are whatever are the allowable settlements. So these are the machine input required. We must have all this information available before design. Then we need some geotechnical data. For geotechnical parameters which are required to design the foundation are number one, the soil weight density, Poisson ratio, dynamic shear modulus or shear wave velocity. And of course, this comes from the cross hole survey. Dynamic modulus of subgrade reaction and allowable soil bearing pressure or pile loads if it is designed on a pile foundation. Now, when we discuss theory of vibration, first we have to define the dynamic load. What are the dynamic loads? Dynamic loads are time variable loads like for example earthquake, impact, blast load and vibrating machine loads etc. So here we are discussing only vibrating machine loads. Displacement and stresses are time dependent. The inertia force are part of the loading system. The dynamic load lead to vibration of the soil and foundation system. In this, the work done is equal to potential energy plus the kinetic energy. And of course, we follow the DM Alembert's principle. A system may be set in a state of dynamic equilibrium by adding to the external forces. A fictitious force which is commonly known as inertia force. The resulting displacement are associated with acceleration which produce inertial forces resisting the acceleration. Then we must have the concept of degrees of freedom. There are six degrees of freedom. For a single particle, there are three degrees of freedom or for a rigid body, there are six degrees of freedom. When we are talking about three degrees of freedom, those are the force in x, y and z direction. When we are talking about six degrees of freedom means there are three components of forces in x, y and z and three components of moment in x, y and z direction. This block shows the, 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 the direction of the forces and the moments in each um, principal axis directions. Now let's go to a little bit of uh, theory of vibration. Here what I have considered, I have considered a load W, of course the mass will be W upon G, which is suspended by a spring with a spring constant K and a dash pot or a, a damper is associated with the damping coefficient C. The actual position of this spring is somewhere here in in this condition but when the load is applied there is an static displacement and this is static displacement displacement is delta st of course this delta st is simply nothing but the force which is acting downward that means the weight of the body divided by the spring constant k in this point first i am going to Ignore the, the, the damper for the simplicity. Now, when this system is vibrated a little bit, so what happens that this W will go down and then it will be moving from down to top and again back. So it will be vibrating in vertical plane and the vertical uh, displacement is Ky in up in y direction, the acceleration will be my double dot, and of course the 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 uh, moment the the uh, inertial force or, or the the damping force will be c into y dot. So if it's a free vibration, then simply we can establish this equation that 
m which is mass of the body into acceleration y double dot plus c into y dot plus ky equals to zero and if there is a, 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 a force that is the force time dependent force acting on it then m y double dot plus c y dot plus k y will be equal to f of t. So these two are differential equations and we can solve these differential equations easily with the help of uh, simple mathematics. Here I am going to show you how these equations are solved. For example, a possible solution for, for this uh, equation will be y is equal to e raised to power st. So if I put these values and calculate what will be the y dot. So y dot will be s into e raised to power st. y double dot will be s square into e raised to power st. If we substitute all these values in first equation, then we will obtain this equation, which will be s square plus c upon m times s plus k upon m times into e raised to power st. Now, of course, e raised to power st cannot be zero. So this uh, the, 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 this part of the equation will be equal to 0. So we put s square plus c over m times s plus k over m equals to 0. Now this is a simple quadratic equation. We can easily solve the quadratic equation and we can get the roots like s2 and s1 and s2 which will be half m into minus c plus under root c square minus 4 km and of course with the negative sign over here. So these are the two possible roots of this equation number I13 or 113th, whatever. Now, we know that the nature of these roots dependent on this parameter under root C square minus 4 km. Suppose this is equals to zero. So what will happen this will be C, C, that is the critical damping, it will be equals to 2 times under root Km. And this is called the critical damping. In this case, this factor will be 0. So we will have only one solution and that will be unique solution. Now, if we want to solve the second equation, or sorry, the same equation, we can also assume uh, the solution which is equal to a raised to power e raised to power s1t plus b raised to power s2t. And this will give me a complete solution. And with the same conditions or with the same technique, with the same mathematical juggling, I can get these conditions. For example, when there is no damping, that means when c is equal to 0, my equation reduces to very simple analysis or very simple result where y is equal to c1 cos omega nt minus 5. And further down, we can obtain these equations, which are the actual equations. I'm not going into further details of these uh, solving the equations. Maybe in some other lecture, I will discuss the dynamics in detail and I will show you how to find the solutions of these equations. Second case, now here, this is undamped free vibration. This is the graphical representation of uh, the undamped free vibration. Next, when C squared is less than 4 km, but it is more than zero. That means it will be an under damped condition. So in case of under damped condition, we can solve these equations and we will get these results. Third case will be when C squared is equal to 4m, that means this is the critical damping. So for critical damping, we will get these results. And these are very pretty simple to, to get these results. And then over damp system, when C square will be more than 4 km, then of course, we will have a positive value. And 
uh, it will be over damp system over damp system means there will be no more vibration only one time it will close so these are under damped critically damped and over damped systems now in case of forced vibration we can use the same technique here our equation was my double dot plus cy dot plus ky is equals to a, 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 an external force which is f type f as a function of t now suppose that this function of t is equals to f not the, the force f of t is equals to f not sine omega t and with the help of this equation and our mathematical knowledge we can solve these equations and we can get these results these are pretty simple mathematics again we can solve it very easily here actually i am not uh, going to to show you the detailed mathematics rather i am going to show you only the final results and of course everyone knows that in case of uh, uh, an external force we will have these final equations now this graph it shows the frequency ratio which is modified frequency uh, sorry magnification factor m versus frequency ratio r so if there are various values then we will have different type of peaks over here and with the help of this i will jump to the example of the machine foundation this example i have taken from the same book i'll show you let me show you the example this example is on page 106 so here is this example machine data is given the, all these parameters these are given over here soil foundations are given over here i have copied the same data over here so in this example the machine parameters are like for example the compressor its weight is 28115 pound gas cooler 4350 pound etc uh, these are the vertical forces which are again given soil parameters these are the parameters given for example the plant grade is 100 feet the top of foundation will be 100 feet and 6 inches recommendation foundation elevation will be 95 6 inches and other soil density etc shear modulus everything is given over here now this is the shape of the foundation this will be a block foundation and of course the center of gravity of the forces are here uh, for the compressor and center of gravity for the motor is here this shows the, the 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 weight of the foundation acting here the dimension of the foundation all the information required is shown over here now what I have done, I have solved this problem over here. Now, all these values are reproduced over here from the same problem. You can see this is the, 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 the column showing machine parameters. This is the column showing concrete footing dimensions. And here, this one properties then all the forces are calculated over here for example time dependent what are the omega t cos of omega t and cos of 2 omega t etc so these are the forces which i have calculated as per the formula shown over here now here comes the actual calculation this table is reproduced based on the, the the reference book here i have calculated for example the parameters here the first parameter is mass and 
and that's moment of inertia. Formula is here. Vertical excitation in x direction. These are these are all values given. Horizontal excitation, rocking, and the punching excitation in phi direction. Then equivalent radius. This is given in table 4.2. You can see the formula over here. Similarly, embedded factor for the spring constant. Again, this formula is given in table 4.2 and the formula is reproduced over here and it is calculated. The spring constant, now equivalent spring constant, embedment factor for damping, that means the factor alpha, beta, eta, geometrical damping, internal soil damping, etc. etc. And then the forces. All these forces are calculated over here. Frequency ratio, all the references are given over here. So one can reproduce easily. Uh, if I take to explain each and every cell over here that how I, I took the formula and how I derived, it will take very long time. This I want to mention that these values are calculated over here based on the problem given in the book so one can find the book when and one can try and if needed one can ask me and i will support definitely and then finally design check first is the bearing capacity of course the bearing capacity is safe bearing, bearing capacity with dynamic load all this calculation is done over here safe then in case of settlement the settlement is negligible that is also is okay vibrating amplitude this is within acceptable range velocity this is also in acceptable range acceleration it is not applied here magnification factor is okay it's slightly larger but it's okay uh, it does not have any big impact So based on this, I can say that one can, of course, resonance is here. Resonance is under acceptable limits, transmissibility factor, and available vibrating modes. These are all calculated and checked thoroughly. So I can see that one can use this book and the, one can design the, the block foundation or the tabletop foundation, whatever is needed with the help of uh, this presentation and he can solve. If anyone wants to know a little bit more and he needs my help, I am free to help you. Guys, you can just send me an email or you can comment. And one more request that please do not forget to, to, to subscribe my channel. And uh, of course, your subscription give me a, uh, a it encourages me to, to develop more and more lectures. At the end, I want to explain you one more thing that this lecture is coming after quite a long time. This is because I lost my job in Saudi Arabia and then I moved to Pakistan back and now I am residing in Islamabad and I am working as a freelancer structural design engineer. So if anyone needs my support, I'm always ready. I have uh, registered my firm over here with uh, the name of MSH Associates. And I can uh, help anyone who needs my help all over the world. If you have any, any project where I can design the, the, the structure for you, it will be very appreciated. I will appreciate a lot. So please do not forget to, to contact me. Do not hesitate to contact me. I am always there to help you. Thank you very much. Bye. Let me close.